Hey guys, it's the Davey Damage Show. Now, starting off this episode, I wanted to point out that I have dyed my beard because before it was a little bit too orange for the camera and I look like Garfield's ball sack. So now I've dyed it a little bit darker, I just look like a nondescript ball sack. So uh, thanks to everyone for checking out the last video we did on Ben's awesome toy collection. A huge thanks to all the likes, shares and everywhere that everyone's been getting it out there. Uh, had some awesome feedback, including some shitty feedback, like old mate here going, Oh, so that's what you do when you can't get a girlfriend. I was like, why would he be so negative? And then I, I realised the reason being that his dick looks like half a uh, Ikea pencil and his butthole probably looks like an uh, open can of tin spaghetti. So uh, anyway, today we're heading along to check out an awesome toy collection of a good guy called Trent. Uh, the collection's so big that this is going to be a two-parter. So uh, we'll split it up and uh, you can check out both videos. I'll make sure I put the link down in the description here. Thanks again. Let's go check it out. That's the Davey Damage Show. Another episode, another great toy collection. Right now I'm here with Trent. Thanks for having it. Nah, awesome to have you around, Davey. So uh, how long have you been collecting? Uh, pretty much uh, for about 20 years. So yeah, it's, uh, so it's a long haul, but I love it. Now, are there any toys that you don't currently have that you you want so bad you'd sucker punch a baby for? <sighs> Probably quite a few. Um, I look at the moment I'm going Toxic, Toxic yep. Crusaders, so I'd love to get that mint on card and just sort of round that out a little bit. Um, but there's a few, like there's the blank from the Dick Tracy line, which was one of the first lines I collected, and that blank figure is just a phenomenally expensive figure. So, yeah, I mean... There's plenty out there that I'd love to get my hands on, but I'm, I'm practical. Yep. Now, I've noticed you're mostly a mint on card collector, so are any of these toys from your own childhood? Not much made it through mint on card, so I pretty much had to go back and yep. recreate the, the mint on card aspect of it. So um, I don't think there's, there's really anything that I retain, uh, unfortunately. But, you know, as a kid, I never would have thought to keep packaging or keep things yes, on yeah. card like well, just a foreign, kid. yeah crack it open get it out and play with it and now in the collection that you do have what is your absolute grail piece look it's probably the Eternia playset from the Master of the Universe toy line which was the last playset to be released it consists of three towers all joined together by a monorail working battery operated monorail um, and you can attach three different vehicles to that monorail and send figures around it so it's uh, largely complete. I'd love to get a repro of the monorail because the original's fairly brittle, and yep. you know I got it and just joined it together and it snapped. So yeah, but but largely complete and really happy with that that place. It it takes up a yep. a lot of room. Yeah. Now I know I personally collect just because it's easier than collecting actual friends. Yeah. Why do you collect? Yeah, pretty much the same thing. I mean, like I can come in here and you know have a have a lot of people that I can chat to and talk That's to it, but it's, um, fuck friends yeah yeah who needs friends um nah but uh actually it all really stemmed from a, a dream I had one yep. time I dreamt that I had an entire Dick Tracy mint on card collection underneath my bed um and then one day I was in a store called Movie Maniacs yes yeah and they had mint on card Dick Tracy figures and I'm like something is telling me to buy these figures so I started sort of collecting those figures it's just weird but yeah it all comes back to a a dream like just a random dream I had as a yeah. kid and that sort of got me back into it and then just I just loved toys so much as a kid I wanted to recollect I guess yes. the stuff I had as a kid and the stuff not only the stuff that I bought but the stuff I'd seen in the shops that I wanted to get and mum said no nah, you can't get that today yeah. so. How often are you, are you like buying stuff every day? Are you like checking, checking eBay and stuff every day? Or yeah, it, yep. pretty much uh, it would be very rare for a day to go by where I don't check a website or eBay. I'll see what's happening. But as you'll see as we get into the video, my collection being mint on card takes up a lot of space. I'm, yep. at, well, I'm at and well beyond capacity. I've got to store stuff five, six, seven figures deep um, because it's mint on card. So, do I'm, you need someone to take your Ninja Turtles and look after them for you? Yeah, there's certain things. I know probably a guy. Not, I do yeah, know a guy. Yeah. Um, probably not Ninja Turtles, but there is stuff I do need people to come along and get off my hands because it's just stuff I probably bought at the time thinking it was cool and now that I've refined my taste, I can probably do without. Probably it won't get there with Ninja Turtles, but 
I've, if I've got doubles, I'm generally happy to clear stuff out and get yep. rid of it and sell it. So um, potentially the, those things will come up. You and Ben, who we saw in a previous episode, uh, you guys have a toy podcast together because podcasts aren't as cool as YouTube videos. It's a fact. Um, it was on an episode of Mythbusters. Yeah. Uh, what's the podcast? Tell us about it. Yeah, so look, we get together, there's a couple of guys, Ben, as you mentioned, who's on your episode yep. one, um, and uh, Darren and Frank, who are also local yep, toy collectors, yep. and we just get together. It's a, it's a toy-themed podcast, but we also talk pop culture more generally, so movies, TV yep. shows, that sort of thing. And so we try, we, when we started off the thing, we said we'll do a half-hour segment, and then just because we talk so much, we end up filming for about, uh, or recording for about five hours. Yeah. So we, we now try and sort of split that recording session into a couple of different episodes, so you might get an hour, hour and a half. But it's just really us talking about a particular topic. It might be Master of the Universe, it might be Turtles, it might be what's happening at a con, and trying to dissect it and break it down and understand what's happening in the toy industry and what's being released, what you might yep. see. But but try and take it into a level of detail. So unfortunately, you know, it's it's probably not for for the, the kids. It's, yep. it's probably a bit of a deeper dive. But if you're sort of into into toys and want to go that next level and sort of see what's happening or get a perspective, then that's yep. what we're about. Yeah, and we have a lot you of fun. You hear that doing. kids? If there's any kids watching, go and fuck yourself. So uh why don't you take us and show us uh, your collection while I choose what I'm going to steal? Yeah, let's do it. And uh, yeah, I'd recommend that one over there. It's probably worth a fair bit. Let's do it. Yeah. So you yeah, got a couple of Dino Riders as a kid and just fell in love with the action features and the amount of detail. So a couple of years back, I decided to collect it. And this is what I've accumulated so far. They're an absolute bastard to try and get all the different bits. You'll see here the um, T-Rex that I've got. That's a custom version. Um, the actual box art had that colour scheme, but unfortunately the toy came out a sort of grey colour. So that's my, my sort of um, representation of what the box art and what the cartoon has. Got to get down to Series 3, uh, this sort of yellow and black Pteranodon, which is part of season three, hard to get, incomplete here, so still trying to chase down some of those bits. And this is probably the holy grail of the Dino Riders collection, which is the Brontosaurus from series two. It's got a lot of different parts, and it's pretty much complete. A few broken bits here and some um, grating that basically comes down, but some really cool action features. It's got the missiles, it's basically got these rollers that you can drop down this slippery dip here on the bad guys below. It's got the winch. Got the cockpit here that fits uh, a couple of figures. And um, this little piece is uh, pretty sought after to make sure you got that. And yeah, just displayed it with the basically the Rulons on one side and the Dino Riders on the other side. And when you do that, you can get a really clear picture of the, the box art that the Dino Riders features all the green sort of colors. And the Rulons are really the, the earthy sort of desolate volcan volcanic sort of tones. Um, you get down here, got the again one of the series three figures, which is the Camasaurus. Um, pretty pretty sort of tough to find when you're getting into series three. And then yeah, a couple of a couple of the other good guys. Hidden a few non-dino riders in there for the eagle eye fan, if you can spot them. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty much a, a complete collection, bar a few bits and pieces. So my one ode to Transformers is essentially my collection of masterpiece and third-party knockoffs and a bit of Hasbro stuff chucked in there as well. Um, so really my focus is on any figure that relates to the 1986 Transformers movie. Um, I really like the direction Takara Tomy went in terms of doing the more cartoon accurate versions as they got later into their line. Um, you know, but you know that's potentially a little bit controversial. Um, I just bought actually, I think this one here, um, which is Prowl, was my first figure and I got I got the knockoff, it's not actually an official Takara Tomy, it's one of the knockoffs and I just paid like 40 bucks shipped from China and got it just to you know, see what they were like, transformed it and just loved the engineering and so just went from there basically picking it up. If Takara Tomy haven't done it, like when we get to Blaster here, that's a third party knockoff version and if I like the third party knockoff version I'll grab it in that if they haven't done it in the Takara Tomy um, but then obviously that creates a risk of when they do do it you've probably got two versions that you have to pick up but the quality of some of the third party stuff uh, is pretty pretty phenomenal so you know 
credit to the guys that can make those sort of figures. Um, huge Galvatron fan, so here's Galvatron with the uh, the Matrix that he acquires at the end of the film. Um, had him as a kid and, and just love him. Um, wanted to get him so basically you could you know have the the crushing of Star Scream's helmet before he sort of disintegrates him like he does in the movie, which is just finally Starscream gets his comeuppance so that's that's pretty cool and actually um, one of the, the people that got me into it was uh, Ben who I went over to his place one day and saw the um, sound wave and he was just saying it's basically a near perfect action figure he got it, it was so good that he never even bothered to transform it because the robot mode was just so superior um, loved the jets so got all the different versions of the the sort of Starscream mold reuse so you know acid storm and thundercracker and sun sunstorm and the light and then yeah recently was lucky enough to pick up the uh sort of more cartoon accurate uh, star scream ghost star scream and a few other things thrown in like unicron and Jetfire, just to round it out they're not technically masterpiece but i think they they fit in pretty nicely so just recently um i've been living a bit of a wave of 80s nostalgia so just trying to collect some of the toys i had when i was a kid and mask made sense because uh, I sort of love the transformation feature and um, real quality toy that um, that uh, Kenna put together. So started um, collecting that and pretty much got through most of the stuff. If we get along here, we'll basically get to Stinger, which is the sort of um, orange, uh, whatever it is, uh, assault vehicle, basically turns into a tank. I remember when I was in uh, year one or year two, basically writing into Santa from a catalogue asking for this toy. Clearly my letter never got to Santa and I never got it, so this was a huge one for me to track down. So I've got I've got it there in both both the sort of normal car version, tank version, and then sort of mint in box at the back. So that's a pretty key one from my childhood. But yeah, there's a lot of lot of cool toys. I remember going over and playing with um, you know the the plane that turns into the helicopter at a friend's place and just thinking these are just such cool toys, the colours, you know the bright sort of pink and blue just looks so cool and then like uh, the howitzer that comes in uh, the I guess the black uh, oil tanker here is, is pretty sweet when it pops up and you've got that that massive cannon that you could basically take a head off with it's uh, it's pretty sweet slingshot had as a kid but really prone to breaking just the mechanism in it seems a bit dicky so um, I've got a few versions of that just to try to get the one with the right mechanism and uh, yeah, probably the the most iconic vehicle of the of the lot is is Rhino, which is sort of the purple semi that doesn't really do much in terms of transformation, but it has the rocket. And um, if you ever go back and rewatch some of those ads, they're pretty cool with the way they show the action features. I think there's a shot of of basically Rhino taking out Switchblade, and uh, they actually you know get line it up and get the the action working. Another one here in terms of Thunderhawk. Um, in terms of Matt Tracker's most iconic vehicle, you've got a couple of different versions. If you look here, you've got sort of the shorter mask version that has less below the neck. And then here you've got sort of the longer version. So there, there's a few variations within the line. Um, but yeah, no, cool just to sort of see some of those. And um, yeah, some of them have just really, really nice looks to them. A lot of chrome, as you can see here with Hurricane. And like the fact that it goes basically from a, a two-wheeler when you transform it, the third wheel sort of pops out the back, which is just really cool and, and basically turns into a, a cannon, which just looks really sweet. And um, yeah, some some pretty cool different vehicles there. We've got Volcano here, which is battery operated. You chuck a battery in, it drives off, and then halfway through the driving motion, it pops open. I'll see if I can replicate the uh, the action uh, here manually but pops open you can basically put a guy sort of in there to to take the gun but that all happens and is automated with the battery battery operation so pretty cool there and um, getting into here some of the where they had the racing series so these were sort of racing vehicles and the cartoon went in more of a racing direction and then you get into what they called the final line which is the split seconds so each vehicle split apart and turned into two vehicles um, so they're, they're some of the harder to come by figures and as you can see down here each figure kind of came with the, the person and then a holographic representation of them and that holographic representation would pilot the split off vehicle so you can see there a couple of sort of the character and the, the holographic versions so yeah huge, huge fan of mask and um, 
getting getting pretty close to rounding that out. You can see just if you pan sort of back here, Davey, there's a um, version of Matt Tracker who was released as part of the G.I. Joe line. So some nice little nods or, or crossovers that Hasbro have done and um, trying to bring Mask back. And at the moment, we've got a comic book series that we're up to about issue five on Mask. So it's nice to see some new media and hopefully we'll see some new toys in the future. And so this is a line that's done by DC Collectibles, which is basically all the Bruce Tim animated stuff. Huge fan of that in the uh, early 90s when it came in to tie in with uh, Batman Returns. Um, they've done the new Batman Adventures as well as the traditional Batman Adventures stuff and a bit of other um, stuff like, you know, animated adventures of Superman, a um, bit of the Batman Beyond stuff as well. But I guess my real passion is, is sort of here where we start with the uh, Batman, the animated series, and you've got some really great characters and, and really iconic versions that, that Kenner didn't get to when they did their line, like Talia, and, and a really great version of Zatanna here. Um, you've got the, the really, you know, hot Selina Kyle as Catwoman, which is just a beautiful representation and getting into the Batman. Like, characters like Harvey Bullock, as we get here, just to get him made into a figure, and a really great version of Commissioner Gordon is, is absolutely outstanding. So... Yeah, huge, huge respect for this line. And I think it's probably, to date, one of DC Collectibles' most long-running lines, which is great to see. So, love Superpowers, uh, done by Kenner uh, back in the 80s, but haven't had a chance to collect it. So, just recently, Gentle Giant have done some larger-scale replicas of the, of the figures, and, and it's similar to what they've done with their Star Wars line, taking the original moulds and basically blowing them up. So this is my opportunity now to get into superpowers and put together a bit of a collection. Hopefully it goes for the full wave, but if not, I'm sure we'll get some of the most iconic characters. Yeah, so another line that I missed out on as a kid uh, is the Terminator line. So I went back recently and just tried to pick up a couple of the figures. Uh, there's three main lines, which is Future War, the, the second installment, the Terminator 2, which is based loosely around the, the movie, um, and then as well the Terminator 3D, which is based on the ride. Um, yeah, a lot of nostalgia for this line, and obviously the film is is one of the pinnacles um, of filmmaking, and and just a great film to watch. So really, really happy to have have this line, have a representation of this line. Some really cool action features in there. So you've got the blaster T1000, which basically the head drops down and the rockets launch out and shoot out of the back there, which is pretty cool. And you've got a few versions here of the. Uh, Terminator by Arnie where he's basically pops down, his face pops off, his chest pops out and he's got missiles and guns underneath there so some really cool innovation with the action features which makes this line a lot of fun you know here you got the T-1000 that basically uh, replicates the sort of liquid nitrogen phase of the film where he explodes and and then can sort of reform so yeah really cool to get that that morphing version of him in his liquid state and his police officer state so I got a bit of Lego, but I can only display so much Lego because it takes up a lot of room. Here is sort of my modular stuff, which is just like crack for adults that want to get that Lego reconnection and build something that's fully modular, has interiors and a lot of detail. Huge Batman fan as well, so I collect all the Batman Lego and there's just probably a little bit interlaced here in terms of the minifigures. Um, mainly love the minifigures, but you know to get them you have to buy the sets and the sets are cool But yeah, they just take up so much room. So really love the blind bag stuff But clearly yeah, collect all the sets to try and get all the different minifigures because they're just they're just awesome and I love them So huge turtles fan. So when the 2003 cartoon got relaunched I went straight into Maya and picked up the first wave um, knew they were coming out, so just into this from the very outset. As you can see here, unfortunately, there's a bit of um, space limitations, so sort of they go a little way back, but this is pretty much an entire set of 2003. Um, loved the cartoon series. Like, I would watch that before I went to work and, and just, like, would be late to work because I was watching it. A huge fan of Yusagi, and this is just such a brilliant version. Also love Fugitoid. Um, so to finally get a really accurate version, in addition to like the gold and black version we got with Playmates, you got things like Casey with the removable hockey mask. He's just looking so cool in this version as well. Hun, new characters introduced with the... In this version, you've got Hun who actually gets scratched by Splinter as opposed to a Rukusaki. So he's got the scratch marks there and the big badass tattoos. And if you ever 
see some crazy ass knuckle dusters check out those bad boys there just like it's a knuckle arm essentially to, to mess you up and yeah a couple of the the later waves we've got some pretty uh, hard to get figures like quarry who was pretty key in the first uh, season but was was released really late on in the line and it's a pretty sought after sort of figure and uh yeah nobody who's really cool from the mirage comics and then you've got savanti romero who he appears in the um, Mirage comics in a slightly different physique. He's a lot more, um, he's a skinnier sort of slender character, but to actually get a Savanti Romero character is really cool. Probably not my favourite cartoon as we went to fast forward, but the figures are pretty cool. So unfortunately in Australia we didn't get the full assortment released, but picked up whatever I could locally and I still got to hunt down the remaining fast forward figures. But yeah, very, very cool line and awesome cartoon series. Big fan of Batman and the DC Universe, and when uh, Rocksteady put out their Arkham video game series, I had to collect the line. So yeah, there's some pretty cool representations or different takes on the characters, which I think really work. You've got uh, you know Harley, who's looking great um, in this version. She's got yeah a number of different versions, but very true to the character. This is sort of the introduction of the dyed hair concept. That we saw come through in the Suicide Squad movie as their take in it, which is which is pretty cool. Um, you got the Penguin who in, in this one instead of having a monocle, he's basically in the in the asylum, so he's got a, a a bottle and it's sort of stuck to his face and there's a gash around there, so it's really dark and gritty, and uh, just loving that. So number of iterations, I think each of the video games got their own release, so pretty much tried to keep up with these. You got Two Foot Two Face, he comes with the the coin there. And uh, yeah, that really sort of burnt look, which was probably inspired by the the Nolan universe. But yeah, really, really nice collectible line. And um, we head into here, uh, I'm a big Green Lantern fan, so DC Direct at the time put out a line, and it went through various iterations, but we basically got five series from this line. Some really, uh, you know, nice versions. You got their Star Sapphire, which is the Carol Ferris character, um, looking, looking, you know, got the sort of peekaboo top which is uh pretty nice and you've got uh things like um Sorik Natu which is Sinestro's daughter in the comic book so to get a figure of her is is really cool you head into then where it sort of I see it transitions into Blackest Night Blackest Night had I think seven or eight um waves which is really cool um again some really nice versions of new characters like Atrocitus and you see Arisa getting a, a figure in in the uh, figure form and then we get which is blackest night which is essentially it's a zombie zombie story you get a lot of the heroes coming back as black lanterns so essentially the the undead and um, here you've got one of those which is wonder woman um looking pretty good actually in pretty good shape a lot of them are sort of pretty decrepit you've got there uh, there you've got firestorm he's looking a bit worse for wear and and some of them are sort of very very zombie-ish yeah. so they're, they're pretty cool and it wasn't actually this is quite interesting because it wasn't until series six that you actually got your Hal Jordan Green Lantern so I think though DC Direct was sort of saying we've released Hal Jordan in the Green Lantern one if you want him you've got him you've got to wait for him so series six we got that one you got Mera and the cat I think uh, the artist basically based this Red Lantern cat on his own cat which is probably saying a lot about what he thought of his cat to make him into a Red Lantern and then, yeah, this is just the weight of some of these figures. Like, this is just a hefty figure. This is Arkillo from the um, from the Yellow Lantern Corps. He, he has a battle in the comic books and basically loses, has his tongue ripped out, and then it's hung around his neck as a sort of uh, signify his loss um, of the battle. So he's got to wear that, basically, that severed tongue around his neck, which is a really nice addition. You probably wouldn't see that in your kids' toy lines, but in DC Direct and DC Collectibles, you can get that level of detail. Uh, the story then continues on to Brightest Day. So yeah, a couple of three series of about five figures, each one there. Um, really like this version of Mera, uh, which is a, a really, really nice um, version of her. Uh, I think they've done that, that absolutely beautifully. I think we've got Amber Heard, who will be playing her in the up-and-coming Justice League and um, Aquaman movies. And then we head into a bit more stuff from uh, DC Direct. And uh, we've got a bit of stuff that ties into their animated universe, which they're releasing. And Boba Fett couldn't fit him in the display, so he just sort of pops up there randomly. So yeah, I loved Police Academy movies as a kid. Just watched them and just laughed the whole way through. Um, 
just some random toys that Kenner did based on the animated series that was released. Had a few of them as a kid, but they've got some really cool action features. Like you see there, Zed. Uh, he, he comes basically with shorts that fall down and reveal his polka dot underpants underneath. I mean, it's just a, a zany and wacky action feature. Um, yeah, you've got characters like um, the Kingpin, who's got a money trap, uh, which is pretty cool. And then you get into sort of the disguise. You've got undercover Kerry Mahoney with his undercover sort of uh, homeless person attire, which is, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty awesome. So back in 2003, Mattel had the license to do Batman and the Four Horsemen got involved and basically produced this line, which had various metamorphoses over its, its run. Um, it started off with the Batman figures you see here, and then basically um, once we got through that, generated into a Batman and Superman line. Each wave was split between one would be Batman, one would be Superman. So we saw um, Superman figures released. There was the first Superman actually appeared in a two-pack in the, the Batman line, but we got some really cool Superman characters as well. And then that basically morphed into another line which had 20 odd ways plus a couple of additional ways which is called DC Universe Classics. And I've got pretty much the entire collection mint on card except for I think Wave 19 I missed out on and I've got to sort of go back and put that one together. But yeah, basically it's all Horseman stuff, a lot of reuse in terms of sculpting. Um, and then it sort of morphed into the what we see here through Batman Unlimited. You see when you get to the Penguin that they were, the Horsemen are really inspired by the uh, Superpowers line. Even though they'd done Penguin in Wave 1, they went back and did a sort of more Superpowers version of him. And they, they, I think they pretty much got to every Superpowers character over the duration of the, the 20 waves. And where they missed out on a few obscure things, they went back and did it on their Maddie Collector website, which is pretty cool to, to get through. A lot of variants in this wave. So you've got things like Big Barter, who... Uh, has the sort of the helmeted version there and then you'll sort of see behind here you got a, a different version of her I'll just destroy the collection there but there's sort of the the unhelmeted version so they did that a lot and um, so it was a bit of a, a pain to collect as there was sort of quite a bit of chase figure stuff happening each uh, wave also had a builder figure so you can see there in the boxes uh, different parts of characters so it sort of enticed you to go through and collect the the whole wave so you could build that figure unfortunately because I'm mainly mint on card I don't actually get to see the builder figures so if anyone wants to sell me them um, more than happy to pick those up because I don't have them in sort of builder figure format so DC Direct uh, put out a line based on the work from the Justice and Kingdom Come comic books done by one of my favorite artists which is Alex Ross Alex Ross essentially does each panel in a paint painted style and um, so the characters look like real people, as if, and he does a lot of um, real uh, model work with real actors, and and basically paints them in their different poses. So it's to translate them into figures. Just looks like you're basically getting movie versions of the figures. Um, got into the line a little bit late, so missed out on a lot of the earlier series, and had to go back and collect them, and they were pretty expensive to to put together. Uh, if we just sort of pan up to this Superman, there is a a DC Comics retailer exclusive to Superman, which is the angry, angry version. They really got a lot of good use out of this uh, sculpt because they basically in wave one did Bizarro and then basically put the alternate head on, on Superman. But this is one I thought I'd never get. And uh, yeah, the, the guys down at um, Galaxy Toys helped me out to get that one. So some pretty cool and, and innovative features. You've got Plastic Man who comes with a removable torso with the spring and the giant sort of plastic hands, which is pretty cool. This version of Poison Ivy is They've done a check on it. I know the, the guys in Toy Fair magazine have counted, and it's the Poison Ivy wearing the least amount of clothes in all the action figures we've got. Um, but yeah, some really, really nice and iconic versions of the characters um, that we've got in this line, featuring that really sort of traditional outfit. And attention to detail here, these are real fishnets that are actually applied over the, the figure. So yeah, they're really nicely put together. And you get down to things like Hawkman, they've got alternate heads so you can have, or, or masks that you can put over the head, which is, which is pretty cool. And uh, interesting tidbit here, the Zatanna figure is actually based on Alex Ross's wife, so that's the model that he's used to paint Zatanna. 
Now, is uh, it true that you enjoyed a cosplay as this Poison Ivy as well? Uh, yeah, reason? I did, did try it out. I didn't get the same sort of reaction that, that this figure gets and some of the girls that were doing it. Was it because uh, you were just in Hungry Jacks with, like, gum leaves? That was part of the that? problem, but, yeah, I, I don't think I pulled it off quite as well as that. I didn't actually go for the vine leaf over here, so <laughs> I did, did uh, have that police incident. But, yeah, other than that, um, it went pretty well. So, in 2008, Mattel uh, decided to retry their Masters of the Universe line for adult collectors and they put out a line called Masters of the Universe Classics. Uh, at the start it was done through a Matty... Oh. So in 2008 Mattel decided to go back and try their Masters of the Universe line for the adult collector market. Um, it came off the back of their sort of 2000 and to relaunch which you know didn't was was a hit with collectors and hit the nostalgia sweet spot but didn't really make huge inroads at mass retail they started it off with a basically you know go on the website and buy the figures and it had a bit of a slow start but after a couple of figures it really took off and they were having you know sellouts in in basically the minutes or the seconds and um, at that point you know I was fully invested and I went for the subscription model so what I try to do here is buy a couple of each figure so I can keep one in the card and then open up one to display um, but yeah done by the four horsemen and hugely hugely uh, respectful to the source material and and they have a, a, a uncanny knack of taking the source material which is so awesome and so iconic and just making it uh, really really nice with the articulation the additional size extra heads here you've got you know when you see something like merman they've gone back and done the vintage sort of style card back head as well as sort of the more toy inspired head as well and um, mostly for the most part there's no action features but you get the occasional figure that sort of retains the original action feature there like manny faces has the the head that does rotate um some yeah some really cool versions here uh you've got you know the, the versions of he-man and skeletor are just so cool it took a while to get back to this more vintage inspired head and um, this is sort of the the traditional head that we got with the first release he-man but they went back uh, with the ula figure and did a more vintage toy inspired head which i think is just so awesome um yeah had a it's probably i've lost count of how many figures they've got to but it's it's well over 200 um, Mattel uh, has stopped now producing as of December 2016 so we're up to Super 7 taking on the, the reins with the licensing um, and as you'd expect they've probably been a little bit uh, slow to sort of get products to market but um, we've got Ultimates coming which are you know He-Man, Skeletor, Teela, Ram Man and Faker and they're basically consolidating all the cool parts that we've got over the line and putting them into one figure which is just going to be be awesome when we get those and they'll continue on with the the sort of the classics line as well as the filmation inspired line as we as we go along so yeah looking forward to that so yeah more of the master of the universe classics you've got standor who's a weird character that's inspired by stan lee but but really cool for stan lee fans um, this shelf and, and sort of set up is all the, the non-vintage figures, so you've got 2000 and X cartoon stuff, you've got um, comic book stuff, you've got Princess of Power, you've got sort of Filmation inspired, um, which is really cool. We've got Hover Robots for the first time, which is awesome to see them in the line, um, and a lot, of, a lot of really nice reimagining, as you see here, in terms of new adventures. The new adventures figures were a bit of a disappointment back in the day because they bore very little resemblance to the the vintage He-Man figures and Master Universe figures, but the Horsemen have found a way to really update them and make them cool. It's almost like they went to extra effort with the, the new adventures because they knew that fans probably didn't like the, the stuff we got in the, the late 80s, early 90s. Um, yeah, this version of Shearer here is just, I think, one of the most phenomenal figures they've done just to finally get Shearer figures that went away from the, the doll sort of style with the rooted hair that we got back in the Princess of Power line and really integrate them into the, the He-Man mythology. So that's really cool to see. We've got, you know, characters like uh, Catra and, and finally Shadow Weaver, which is just so awesome. Um, so, yeah, huge fan of it. Uh, I still remember going to San Diego 
and um, talking to Eric Treadaway at one of the the con San Diego Comic Convention, and he was responsible for the uh, the Drago Man, which was part of the 30th uh, anniversary tribute line that they did, um, and the Four Horsemen got to design a figure. And I remember it was just so awesome, and I loved it so much. And Eric Treadaway was talking to me, and he sort of said, "Oh, what do you, you know? What did you think of the Drago Man?" And I was like, "Meh." I got to think about it because I'm not, you know, I'm not sold on these new figures. And then later I found out that he designed it, and I sort of felt pretty bad because it isn't is an awesome figure. You'd basically said fuck you to yeah. his face. I, I said that. I toned it down for the camera, but yeah. Um, we got uh, this is. I'll just tell you an interesting story about this uh, pre-attorney disguise He-Man. So um, it might be floating around somewhere in the toy room, but I did a custom of him back in the day. Um, and posted it on the He-Man.org website, called him Pre-Attorney Disguise He-Man. I basically took a, a He-Man and customed him into the, you know what looks like this figure from the part one of the never-completed vintage um, mini-comic series, um, The Powers of Grayscale. And then a couple of years later, um, they decided to put out a version of, of this figure, which they called Pre-Attorney Disguise He-Man. There's, there's the custom for everyone um, at home. So it's pretty shit, right? But... You know, obviously the horsemen did a great job of it, but that's my claim to fame that the the horsemen were sort of scrolling through figures and seeing what they do. Obviously, they're fans of the mini comic. Uh, it's the Bruce Tim inspired mini comic, um, but the name that I'd used and called mine was the name they decided to use for the figure. When I was in San Diego, I was chatting to the Mattel guys, um, Bill Benneke, um, about that story, and I sort of told him that that I'd done the custom, and he said, "Look, yeah, the horsemen often view the website, so it's plausible." probably unlikely that they got inspiration from you rather than the mini comic and you, you you're full of shit but um but yeah plausible probably a one percenter we're not giving you any money eat a dick <laughs> nah never expect it so yeah so very cool line um you get you get some really cool figures like finally to get a granamere um who's you know staple of the filmation series but also the mini comics we've got the the red and the powercon exclusive green version that's at the end but yeah, some really cool versions of the of the characters. Thanks heaps guys for checking out this episode. Also a huge thanks to Trent. Uh, of course, we'll pick up where that left off in the next episode. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe if you like what you see. And uh, until next time, see you later.